Hey folks, this is JR with DIY Prepper. Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about things that most folks just don't understand about prepping or preppers themselves. Sometimes as I'm going through the comments section um, on videos, I'm like, how? After everything that we have experienced the past couple years, how can people still not get it? Or at least see the, um, the, the usefulness and the utility behind being at least a little bit prepared. But the first thing that a lot of folks don't understand about prepping and preppers is that it isn't all about the apocalypse. The stuff that we buy for different situations food, water, lights for power outages, all that kind of stuff. It isn't just useful in the absolute end of the world or the end of the world as we know it. For example, power outages. I mean, you're probably going to experience at least a short-term power outage once a year if you live most places. Some of y'all probably experience several power outages throughout the year if you live in a more rural area where they don't really take care of the electrical infrastructure, which is sadly most of the United States, but also things like snow ends or any other situation where you're stuck at home for a little while and you can't get out. Maybe you're just sick and you don't want to bother people to come bring you up team dozen cans of chicken noodle soup, you can store those ahead of time so that you have all the food, water, medications that you need to get through that particular situation. Then also, natural disasters. They differ depending on where you live, but we have had so many of these, and they seem to be getting worse and worse. How often do you watch the news and hear them just throw around phrases like, once in a 100 year storm, once in every 500 years, I mean, you probably hear that at least once or twice a year if we have a really bad snowstorm like what we had a couple weeks ago, or we have a really bad hurricane. Then you live other places and you got earthquakes, even volcanoes to worry about for some of you guys. It's just a good idea to be prepared for those. Then there are tons of people all over the country that do not feel comfortable drinking from their municipal water supplies. Of course, Flint, Michigan is the obvious one. That's the real bad one. But even where we live here, our water quality is, is very low compared to what it should be. Having things like water filters and things like that, they're just smart moves because the thing that you'll learn if you pay attention about governments and corporations is that they will lie to cover their butts if they know that they aren't doing their job. Having some level of preparedness, it kind of helps protect you from those people protecting their own best interests. Then let's get into the real bad stuff. The end of the world end of days or end of the world as we know it. There's even a big difference between those two things. So the end of days, an example of that would be a huge 500 mile asteroid slams into earth and wipes out everything. That would be the end of days, the end of the world. You're, you're not gonna limp away from that. Then the end of the world as we know it is something completely different. Now given that it's not as likely to happen as a lot of these other things and it doesn't happen all that often, realistically. An example of that would be the fall of the Roman Empire. The people that were living in that day and age, when all that stuff started happening, that was the end of their world as they knew it. If you live in North America, you've probably never heard of the Anasazi. But a long time ago, they were one of the most advanced, dominant groups of people on the North American continent. But through droughts and other things, their society fell apart. And for those folks that would have been alive back then when all those droughts were going along and crumbling their society, that was the end of their world as they knew it. So things like economic collapses or other things could bring a situation like that about for us. Now given, like I said, the chances of that happening aren't as high as us experiencing a natural disaster. I just wanted to kind of put a difference between the end of days that a lot of people think of as preppers as preparing for and other kinds of situations that could just bring cataclysmic change to our world. Then your preps can also be used for more fun stuff as well. Hunting and camping are probably the most obvious because a lot of the different kinds of gear that we use really fit well within those activities, but also things like gardening and canning. There's folks that enjoy those things that aren't preppers, but 
having those kinds of interests a lot of the time kind of bring people into prepping because usually they have more than one of those kind of interests and it just combines together. That That's my story. I mean, I've enjoyed hunting, camping, uh, being self-sufficient with tools, and it all just kind of combined into this one thing and here I am. Another thing that a lot of folks don't get about preppers and prepping is that it's less about paranoia and more about self-sufficiency. We don't want to depend on other people to take care of us, even during really bad situations. If your goal or your plan is when something happens for somebody else to take care of you, my encouragement would be to grow up. Quit acting like a little child who is depending on other people to take care of you. Now, if you're in a situation where you can't prepare, I'm not trying to talk down to you or anything like that. Just do what you can. It's the folks that have this arrogant mindset about them that, oh, you're so paranoid, nothing is ever going to happen, and if it does happen, somebody else will take care of me. Grow up. But when you actually look at the aid that is provided by governments and various relief organizations, many times it's inadequate. Lack of organization is a big concern, red tape, and then also the fact that there's so many people needing that aid, there's simply not enough to go around. I mean, Shelters are a very good example of that. Many times they're overcrowded, they're overwhelmed, and they can be very dangerous places. Then also, one thing that a lot of people don't get is that people who are preppers do that because of different things that they have experienced throughout their lifetimes. Maybe they experienced a natural disaster, they were unprepared the first time, and they have gotten their mess together just in case it happens again. I mean, that that's a responsible thing. You see something happen to yourself or to others, and you're like, I'm going to learn from that. That's, that's what intelligent human beings do. We learn from experiences. Then also, it could be from military experience. Maybe somebody was stationed in a part of the world that looks very different than the one that you and I live in, and they understand how bad things can get if there is some sort of societal breakdown and they want to be prepared for that because if it happened in one place it's very arrogant to assume that it couldn't happen where you are as well then also i mean you have folks who immigrated from another country maybe they lived under an uh, under an oppressive regime and since they did not have freedom where they lived before now they're somewhere where they do have more freedom they want to take advantage of that and be as self-sufficient as they possibly can in as many areas as they can. Then as far as stockpiling goes, a lot of people do not understand that that is something that is done gradually and responsibly over time. You don't go out and max out your credit cards to get your food supply. No, you go to the store and maybe instead of picking up a five pound bag of rice to get you and your family through the week, you pick up a 20 pound bag to get you through the week and then have some to set aside. If you are the person who is going out and absolutely ransacking the grocery store, you're not doing it right or you're not doing it right because you waited until the last second and you're part of the big group of people who actually is going out and panic buying. So stockpiling when done correctly isn't gonna cause supply chain issues. That comes from people panic buying when everybody goes out and they try to buy the whole store all at once. That's the problem. Then also other things that are completely out of most of our control can cause supply chain issues. Like we have seen chip shortages which resulted in not as many new cars being available and then that in turn caused there to be a shortage or a lack of availability of used cars. These were big economic situations that involved a lot of moving parts failing and then kind of causing a domino effect. Then you have things like droughts and other natural events that can cause different kinds of shortages. Those are the things that cause supply disruptions on a mass scale. Another thing that a lot of folks don't understand about preppers is that we're not necessarily all selfish people. If you've ever been on an airplane. You're always told to put your mask on first before you go and try to help somebody else put their own mask on and that makes a whole lot of sense because if you are not in 
fairly decent shape, you're not going to be able to help others who are not. You got to get your own self lined out first. And if you are prepared, that's going to allow those limited emergency resources to go to the people who actually need them. There are folks out there that do not have the financial resources that they need to prepare at the level that a lot of us do. So if you have your own food, water, medicine, and all that other kind of stuff, you don't have to use those resources. You can save them for those who actually need them. And for some reason, people just don't see how it is necessary and logical. Y'all, our way of life, it's fragile. The past couple years have proven that. It depends on a myriad of different moving parts so that if something happens on the other side of the planet, we will eventually feel that. And we have experienced shortages of different things over the past few years. And it hasn't always been everything at once. It seems like one day you wake up and then all of a sudden there's a baby food shortage or there's a chicken shortage. There's a chip shortage for cars or way back when it was toilet paper. If you haven't started preparing yet, just because you know maybe you haven't got around to it or you feel like you don't have the money to do it, do what you can get started today. There's really no reason not to. If you can't afford a year's supply of food, which most of us can't, pick up an extra like one dollar can of soup at the grocery store and just do that habitually. Then for my friends who don't see the need to prepare and they are, um, they are openly hostile to those who do feel the need to do that because we've actually been paying attention, I would encourage you to wake up. So anyway, thank y'all for stopping by. Y'all have a good one.